if anybody has a problem with that, you're welcome to turn off your video, but we obviously encourage you so we can see your faces and see who we're talking to. As Gabrielle always says, your toilets are where you left them last. We at Toasted encourage participation. We encourage using the chat box, using the reactions, and for clapping, we simply raise our hands like this. So when we introduce speakers, we'll clap like this or use reactions. So please let's interact, let's smile, let's keep our facial expressions going. And please keep yourself muted when the prepared speeches are being presented as well as the evaluation speeches. And I would, I have shared the agenda in the chat box for those who can open it, for those who can't, here it is. And I will hand over to our president. And then I'll, I will do the, the induction of Robert who I see is here. Claire, who hasn't joined yet, but she's doing our icebreaker. And Eugene, of course, who no one has met, but he's a part of our club. So let's give Verity a big round of applause to do the president's welcoming. Thank you so much, Nicholas, and welcome everyone to Toasted's meeting. Uh, very exciting. It's been a very eventful day here in Cape Town for those of us who have been following the news or those of us uh, like Shireen and myself who lived right in the smoke line. There's been evacuations of homes and uh, just praying for, for the winds to start blowing in our favor or at least just stop blowing, but it, I don't think we're out of the, out of the woods yet. But welcome and uh, looking forward to another lovely meeting. I am going to make my excuses. I probably will have to leave after the speeches because we now have moved in with my parents-in-law. We're trying to deal with the baby. It's, so please forgive me if I have to leave. Uh, I'm just going to see how I, can, how I can balance things. But let's get on with our meeting. I know we've got three fabulous speeches lined up. We've got a Toastmaster um, role being done for the first time tonight by Michaela, and I'm uh, really excited for that because she's doing so well with her um, interviews that she's been doing on sustainability, which we've all been loving watching. So that's great. Just a little bit of news. Um, I think we shared on the group that Toasted is now officially a select distinguished club which is amazing. It's the first time we've ever been a select distinguished club. It means we've got seven out of 10 points on not very complicated, but slightly complicated measuring system that Toastmasters gives us. And I'm not gonna give you the whole boring story, but it, the way we've gathered those points is through new members joining our club, is through all of you paying your dues on time and on member after member after member completing an educational path, we get points for that. So every time, you take another step in your journey. It also reflects really well on the club. And uh, we are very soon going to be gaining our eighth point when Claire Van Sale becomes a distinguished Toastmaster. And her kind of one of her final steps in that journey was in organizing the division contest last week, which she did a brilliant job on. So if we can give Claire a big shout out, there was over 85 people in attendance at that virtual conference. And from my side, a huge thank you to all of you for all your support in my journey and I'm looking forward to representing you at the semi-finals on Saturday so ah, <laughs> let's see how we go and um, I see we've got a visitor with us tonight Gerard I'd love to hear what brings you to us this evening and how you found us hi thank you very much um well I, I just started a job as a media liaison officer so it, it's it was suggested by my teammates that I joined Toastmasters. Um, naturally, I'm, I'm an introvert, so you know, I need all the help I can get, basically. Oh, wow. Well, you've come to the right place. And this is, as you'll hear from all our members, it's a beautiful place to learn. And there are many introverts in Toastmasters who still are exceptional communicators. You don't have to be an extrovert to be able to communicate your ideas powerfully. So we look forward to you enjoying the meeting and hearing how you found it at the end of the night. So welcome, Gerard. Beautiful. I see we also have Moritz joining us. I know just as an observer, but I don't know if you want to say hello, uh, Moritz, and, and how it is that you came to us this evening. Not sure. He's on silence. That Moritz is uh, Gabriella's son. 
So hopefully coming to support his mom, that's the assumption I'm going to make. But I see lots of welcome messages coming in for you on the chat box. Jared Moritz, so you managed to unmute. Am I here? Am I there? Yes. Yes, you are. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, no, thanks. Uh, I, yeah, exactly like you said, just wanted to hear in and hear my mom and support and uh, um, see what a, a regular meeting looks like because the last two times I think I've been linked in was for um, the competition um, ah. and uh, so I haven't quite seen how you guys operate um, so yeah that's why I'm here yay lovely to have you with yeah. us thank you. thank you all right I now have the exciting pleasure of, of handing over to Nicholas to induct our three newest members uh, to become officially part of the toasted family so Nick can I hand over the baton to you sure uh, sorry about that. This is usually a job for our vice president of membership. So as we do at Toasted, we step in and step up. And as the inducting officer, I'm going to just say, fellow Toastmasters, it's time now and my duty and privilege to induct Claire Alexander, Eugene Green and Robert O'Brien. These are our new members and they are going to be, they have already joined Toasted Toastmasters Club. This is an important occasion for both of these new members for our club. These individuals have come to Toastmasters seeking to improve their communication and leadership. And we now have the opportunity to help them learn, grow and achieve. Claire, Robert and Eugene. You are joining a worldwide organization that has helped more than 4 million people learn to communicate more effectively. As members of Toasted, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development. You will become part of an outstanding group of people who are dedicated to helping one another in the spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Let me just read the part where you basically sign a pledge. So I, Nicholas, I, yeah, so repeat after me. <laughs> I, I, Nicholas. No, no, not I, Nicholas. <laughs> I, just Robert, joking. I, uh, Claire, or uh, I. Robert. <laughs> yeah. I was just joking. I couldn't resist. Okay. So I, go, Robert. Yeah, and then go I, Eugene. I, Eugene. I, Claire. I clear. In the presence of my fellow members. In the, the presence, presence of, members. of my fellow members. Of the Toasted Toastmasters Club. Of the, of the, toast of the Toasted Toastmasters Club. Make this firm obligation to attend meetings regularly. Make, Make this, this firm, firm obligation regularly. to attend meetings regularly. regularly. And and prepare fully for each assignment. And and prepare prepare fully assignment. for each assignment. To participate actively in club activities. To participate actively in club activities. To evaluate others in positive, constructive manner. To evaluate, to evaluate others, others positive, positive, positive manner. constructive manners. To build open, friendly relationships with my fellow members. To build, to build open, open relationships, with, relationships my with my fellow members. And to bring other new members into the club. And, and to bring, bring, and to bring new other members new members the into the club. Thank you. I will just say this on behalf of us. We the members of Toasted Toastmasters Club pledge to support you in your quest to self-development, to provide you with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain friendly, supportive atmosphere, to give you opportunities to help others and to make your Toastmasters membership a rewarding and fulfilling experience. Can everybody please unmute and say, we will? We will. 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 Ooh, welcome. And now Thank I'd you. Like... <laughs> Great pleasure. I'd like to hand back over to Verity to do the loyal toast and to continue the program. 
Thank you so much, Nicholas. Uh, what he didn't say to you all when you were getting into that, it is a lot like getting married. And uh, <laughs> we just had a, a lifelong commitment made to Toastmasters. Well done. It's always interesting doing it in the virtual platform, but so excited to support you all in your journey and get to know you through your speeches and your leadership roles. So as is customary in Toastmasters clubs around the world, we always make a toast. I know you can see I'm staying with my in-laws, a toast to the, <laughs> the country that we're in. Um, so even if it's an imaginary one, you can hold up an imaginary glass, but this is to South Africa and all her speakers. Yeah. South Africa and all her speakers. All her speakers. I love it. Okay, beautiful. It is now my pleasure to hand over to our toast mistress of the evening. Please give a warm toasted welcome to Michaela. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, Nicholas just said it all. Toastmasters kind of pushes you to step in and step up. And I guess that kind of filters in the whole role of leadership and high performance leadership that we're speaking about tonight. If anything, to just give you a bit of a background, I was kind of thrust into this role, but at the same time, <laughs> put my best fit, but see what I mean, it's gonna start already, the nerves are like stumbling up. I put my best foot forward and decided to nominate myself as a Toastmaster, because of, if anything, this is the book that I've solidly lived my life by, Extreme Ownership, and it is uh, how US Navy SEALs lead and win. A bit intense, you might think, for someone like myself, but it is basically a book that um, aligns with history and brings back tactics from US Navy seal SEALs and how essentially how they live their lives and how they begin to lead teams. And ultimately, it starts off with a question, are leaders born or made? So after these few speeches, perhaps we'll understand that at role a bit better if they made because some psychologists say one third are made whereas two thirds are actually excuse me other way around again nerves bustling up two thirds are made when one third is intrinsic and kind of born with it so with anything without further ado I'd like to guide you through this entire meeting tonight and firstly introduce the roles that we were going through tonight who people have put their best forward and decided that they're going to be the, um, our counter is Paul tonight. And um, then I'm, I'm just going to run through all their roles and then we, they can describe their roles as they go through. Nicola, um, good luck everyone, is our grammarian tonight. She's you know, quite nifty and keeping things out. Then we have Vanya who will be our timekeeper. And then our first evaluator will be Shireen um, who will be evaluating our first speaker, which is Claire, which I believe is the first icebreaker speech. So good luck because that to me is the best icebreaker. It's essentially everything in the word. It's the first step to becoming a real leader within yourself. Then the second evaluator is Anamika. Excuse me if I pronounced your name wrong. Second, um, who will be evaluating our second speaker, which is Claire Van Zale. Third evaluator will be Kevin. Then who will be evaluating um, Gabriella, the non only Gabriella. Then our timekeeper will be Vanya, and of course, I'm your Toastmaster, Michaela, if you have forgotten. But without further ado, Paul, Paul please can you explain your role? Because I already feel like I'm umming and ahhing, and I think it's about time you start counting. Well, thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. I already start counting, so I got already three for your account. But my role is to really to count the ums, the arms, and the so, and the wells, just a filling voice that does not give any added value to your speech. I'm here to count and just to improve your life in speaking. Now, the contest tonight is not to have the most of them, but just try to have the least of them. So I will count them and I will give my report at the end. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. I'm going to be watching myself very closely tonight because I know you're very good at your role. And our grammarian, Nicola, none other, please explain your role. Um, good evening, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay attention to all the speakers, listening carefully to the language you use, and I'll take note of any improper language as well as outstanding words, quotes, or sayings. I'm also going to introduce the word of the day, which I chose, which was persnickety. So it's placing too much emphasis on trivial or minor details, 
such as being fussy, she's persnickety about her food, or it is requiring a particular precise or careful approach. So it's hard to find film more persnickety and difficult to use than black and white infrared. I love it, Nicola, persnickety. Now, what a great word. I've never actually heard that before. So thank you for sharing that knowledge. Banya, please, can you explain your role as a timekeeper? Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Um, I will be the timekeeper and we'll have a video background that has the timer and the screen will go green, yellow and red for the speakers to keep track of the, their timer. Five to seven minutes for prepared speeches, two to three minutes for evaluate, evaluation speeches and one to two minutes for impromptu speeches. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, now let's, I know I'm normally the one that normally goes over time, so thankfully I'm not being counted at this moment. But for Shireen, please can you expl um, explain your role as an evaluator? Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Toastmistress and fellow Toastmasters. My role this evening is my first evaluation of a speech, which I'm very, very excited to be evaluating Claire Alexander and she's following the presentation mastery pathway. It is her level one, project one speech this evening, and it is her icebreaker speech. The time for her speech is four to six minutes, and the title of her speech this evening is Presenting for My Purpose. And the purpose of this project is for Claire to introduce herself to us in the club and to learn the basic structure of a public speech. Claire, you've got this, and don't be too persnickety in your speech. Good luck. Thanks so much, uh, Shireen. Just let me know when I can go ahead. Floor's all yours. <laughs> In 2009, I decided to make my dream a reality. My name's Claire. I'm a Scottish girl that's been living in South Africa for 14 years now. And during this time, I've been fulfilling one of my passions as a event manager through my first company, Firecracker. Firecracker is an award-winning event management, marketing and graphic design agency, which I founded with my South African business partner in 2012. I've been designing and producing events for the good part of 13 years now. I've been doing it for clients all over the world. And although it's a deep passion of mine to provide a great space for other people to connect and learn and communicate, I just knew that it's not my purpose. My dream was to build the most exciting, useful, international, proactive business network from Africa. After eight months of research, other, researching other networks across the continent, I stumbled upon an opportunity to connect Africa in, through a network business model with the country of Scotland. It was then that I realized Scotland and Africa share so many key industries, such as agriculture, technology, entrepreneurship, and energy. So I knew I had to launch this business with an absolute bang. I put a diverse board together, we built the brand, and we set about organizing a fantastic launch event. It played right into Firecracker's skills. 150 people out of the 200 people that we invited RSVP'd. And then it dawned on me that I'd have to do a speech. <laughs> My nerves were completely finished at the thought of that. <laughs> In steps Verity Price. After two months of working with Verity, I took the stage on the 6th of November 2019, and I presented my vision to the scariest audience that I had ever organized. But I must have done okay because 17 months later, Africa Scotland Business Network is now home to 200 individuals from 80 companies in 11 countries. In fact, I've just onboarded KLM and Air France today. So thank you so much, Verity, for being such an important part in launching my purpose-led business. 
So when I'm not running two companies, and I also run a community brand called Illumination, as in lighting up the nation, that's an open dialogue platform for gender-based conversations, if anyone is interested. I'm fiancé to my Tinder success story, Bernard. He's a South African guy, and we have a three-year-old daughter called Ailey. Her name means light in Scots Gaelic, and her little brother, Caelan, who's six months old, and you might be able to hear him in the background. Kaylin means internal warrior in Scots Gaelic as well. Now, light and warrior are concepts that I strongly identify with. I want to be the light in this world, but sometimes you need to unleash your internal warrior to authentically actually make that happen. So outside family, I grew up in competitive sport. I used to swim for my country. And after nearly dying in a head-on car crash when I was 17, I dusted my injuries off, or most of them in a, in a way, and I took up my beloved soccer, or football, actually, as, as I would call it in Scotland. I went on to play in the Scottish Premier League for five years, and I also represented the Scotland National Varsity football team. And when I moved to South Africa when I was 24, Female football was still in its infancy, so I decided to take up boxing instead. <laughs> so I still do boxing today. Um, I've competed in mixed martial arts. In fact, I'm actually training for my first fight this year after two babies, um, despite being 39 years old. <laughs> my goal is to drop 10 kilograms to make weight for the fight which is uh, on Women's Day, uh, International Women, sorry, South African Women's Day in August. And I've also um, started training for the Robin Island Crossing because the car crash that cut my swimming career short, I've never actually um, got psychological closure on that. So I thought, let's do the Robin Island <laughs> Crossing to, to close that door. So why am I here today? I'm increasingly being asked to present and speak in front of big audiences, and I'm increasingly backing out of those opportunities. I lose my words sometimes, I get overly nervous, especially if I don't write them down, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and sometimes I will even hand that opportunity to a board member or someone else in our business to take, um, to take the stage. It can't go any on anymore. Um, last year, I was appointed as a global Scot by the Scottish government. My contribution to Scotland and international business was recognised, and that is how I um, gained that status or award. So here I am, I'm ready to take up the, the challenge of being assisted by your fantastic team and transform myself into an amazing public speaker. So I can then go on and continue to inspire and uplift those in my beloved Scotland and my adopted Africa. Thanks so much. Wow, Claire, you absolute firecracker. I mean, in every sense of the word, I, I'm absolutely bewildered at everything that you've accomplished and you're still taking on so much. I mean, it's like you read this book already. It takes leadership's all about extreme ownership and carrying on and owning what your challenges are and knowing that you can pass through. Thank you so much. That, that was truly inspirational. Wow, I'm glad you're joining our team. Thank you so much. That was a great start. Now, um, for our second speaker is Claire Van Zale. And please, can you introduce um, Claire, please? Annamika. <laughs> you do have it right every time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Delighted to be here and um, assessing Claire, evaluating Claire this evening. She is doing her presentation mastery level two project three introduction to tm which i think is toastmaster correct um, and mentoring and her speech is entitled perseverance tenacity and toastmasters equal success over to you claire do you remember the first person who made a really big impact on you when you attended your first Toastmasters meeting 
or when you joined a Toastmasters club. For me, that was these three people in the background, Dick and Meg, and then that's me when I went to visit them in 2014, and Gordon. These are three of the most amazing people who helped me change my life with Toastmasters. So Meg in the middle there was a lovely silver haired lady in her 60s when I met her in 2008. I was living in the UK and she started Eastbourne Speakers. Now what impressed me was when I found out that when Meg decided to start Eastbourne Speakers, she went every two weeks to the venue that was advertised and waited for the eagerly for people to arrive for six months, not a single soul arrived. But Meg stayed true to her course and her vision and she kept going. And soon, slowly people started attending. And so in January, the 4th of January, 2007, Eastbourne Speakers was born. And I was very privileged to arrive for my first Toastmasters meeting at the area, uh, sorry, at the club contest where Dick, who is from The Bachelors, people who are older in the music scene. He's, uh, he's one of the brothers uh, from The Bachelors uh, group, um, was competing in the speech contest. I learned so much from these three people and other people in my, in my chapter, but those were my mentors. And I learned that it takes committed and dedicated members to help grow a Toastmasters club. It's not just one person, it's a group. And how to inspire people to take action. Within the first three months of membership, I was then inducted as the vice president of membership. <laughs> Before this, I thought, how the hell can you get a job when you don't even know what you need to do? And Meg said, don't worry, Toastmasters has it. We'll send you on training. We'll show you exactly what you need to do and you can then go and do it. And that's the beauty of Toastmasters. It helps us grow, it pushes us out of our comfort zones. And with the mentoring, that's what I learned. So I flew back to South Africa in 2009. I was supposed to come for three months and return back to the UK, but that didn't happen. And 12 years later, here I am. So I found a lovely job in Franschhoek and I joined a Toastmasters club in Paul, but I'd come from a club where we met twice a month. And this nonsense of South African clubs only meeting once a month, I wasn't having any of that. And the only way I could get it right to go to Toastmasters twice a month was to join a second club. So I joined Stellenbosch Toastmasters and went to two meetings a month. I had to get my fix somehow. I have learned so much through those experiences. Unfortunately, in September 2012, my life changed dramatically. And I had to move from my beloved Franschhoek back to table to well to table view. And I still I started looking for a new Toastmasters club. I joined Cape Communicators Advanced Toastmasters Club. But unfortunately, my beloved Paul Toastmasters was in deep, deep trouble in May 2013. And I then went back. And even though it was an over a hundred kilometer round trip to go to meetings, I went back. And a couple of months later, I took on the role of president and vice president membership in order to help the club because there were only six of us and we were under threat of being closed. And I used the knowledge that I got from Dick, Meg and Gordon to help Paul Toastmasters Club do the impossible. Nobody believed it was possible, but we did it. We went from six members to nine. And I said to them, let's just aim to get to Distinguished Club, which is five points out of 10. What I didn't tell them was, I actually planned and knew that we could get to a President's Distinguished, at least nine out of 10, but I didn't want to freak the hell out of them, so I didn't tell them about this. We had a meeting and we set at looking at where our six members were and what we needed to do to get to being distinguished. And I used those mentoring skills that I'd 
learned in Eastbourne speakers and in other places within uh, East Sussex, where I'd viewed what Meg and Dick and Gordon had done in other clubs. And I used it in Paul Toastmasters. Within six months, we went from nine members to 18 members. And we finished the Toastmasters year as a President's Distinguished Club. I'm very disappointed to say that having pulled that rabbit out of that hat, we did not get the award. We were nominated, but we did not get the award for the club of the year. Unfortunately, it went to a club that had over 35 members who to get presidents distinguished was a breeze. They had 35 people to do that. But sadly, at least we were nominated and we knew what an amazing job we'd done. And that's what mentoring is all about. It's helping to inspire others into action giving them examples of what, what you've done, not giving them the steps and letting them do that themselves. Now, Toasted, does this sound familiar at all? Yeah, because this is exactly where Toasted was earlier at the start of this Toastmasters year. And that's why I was over the moon at the opportunity to be your club coach. Coach being the word, but actually I knew you guys could do it. And I was there as backup and support because you have the same fire and passion and commitment and dedication and persistence that I knew with my members in Paul that we could do that. And what have we done? You guys, seven out of 10, and it's April. We have two and a half months and we can definitely get that president's distinguished. What do you think? Woo uh, woo. Well, Claire, every time you speak, it doesn't matter what you speak about. I feel like all of this energy and bustling is so animated, just really, really amazing. And it's so interesting. I'm seeing all of these roles that they speak about in this book, which I will share now in the chat. But basically, they speak about you need to believe in the mission, you need to believe in the goal, because if you don't believe it, how's your team going to and you really push us from behind. So thank you. That was brilliant. I love listening to that at every second. <laughs> so now I'm going to move on to our third evaluator. And I just wanted to give a little side note because Verity has stepped in and stepped up to let me know to remind you that we're not evaluating you as people because that's just a bit intense and cruel. We're evaluating your speeches. So to those who have joined, please don't be scared away. You haven't pledged your life away to, for judgment. We're only here to help. Trust me, I'm only taking this role so I can learn to get into a better role. So again, evaluations are for speeches, not for you as a person. <laughs> So moving on swiftly, Kevin Robertson, um, please, can you explain your role and as well as your evaluation for Gabriella? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. And tonight we will be hearing about from Gabriella um, how we can do more than we think. It is a level uh, three project from um, Presentation Mastery. It's uh, elective one. And the topic of the or the, the purpose of the project is to inspire your audience. So Gabriella will have five to seven minutes to um, to tell us about uh, what we deliver a speech. And the purpose is for her to um, practice writing and delivering a speech that inspires. If I stay long enough in water, would I be frozen to ice cubes? And what does this ice and I have in common? Being water. No, if I stay long enough in cold water, it would be a tool to melt stress, depression, and a blocked sense of self. Water, the ocean, can deeply change a human being. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toasties, humans had hit a wall, being locked away for such a long time. 
They felt insecure. They had lost their jobs. They didn't know what the future will bring. And they reacted with anxiety, depression, and physical pain. But for Cape Townians, the solution lay right in front of their doorstep, swimming in the cold ocean. At dawn, there is a pilgrimage to Neptune's salty element, women cladded in white robes and men with black hoodies are walking to the beach or to the tidal pool. They look like members of the Ku Klux Klan being on a mission. The mission is to feel good and I am one of them. Since five years, I'm swimming in cold water. I have been inspired by two men, Wim Hof and Craig Foster, to challenge myself beyond the simple backstroke. Those two men were whispering in my ear, we can do more than what we think. Craig, Craig opened my eyes and my heart to look below the surface and fall in love with the magic of the African sea forest by snorkeling and freediving. Craig wants us to reconnect with nature, nurturing and healing ourselves in nature, and by doing so, inspire others to do the same. He invites us to be a custodian and not a consumer of the ocean. I must admit, some days the water is very cold, but I tackle it like a cannonball the battlefield, in as fast as possible. My mind screams, are you crazy? You will think like a popsicle and nobody will find you. I admit my love for the ocean runs deep, but sometimes so does my fear. But then I hear the two men's voices. We can do more than what we think. And on I go. I don't feel cold anymore after five minutes, just happy and relaxed. And I swim out to the white rocks because there the water is clear. And then I use stipend of kelp to pull myself down in the deafening silence of an unknown mystical planet, only illuminated by dancing rays of sunshine like laser beams. And the other inspirational man is called Wim Hof, the Iceman, so called because he got ice breaking records on his back. His motto is, we can do more than what we think. And he does. He can sit in ice for two hours, pure ice. He has walked up Mount Everest to an altitude of 7,200 meters, just in shorts and shoes. And he has run in the Namib Desert, just without a drop of water. This man is incredible. And he is the center or the object of intense medical studies from America and Europe. He has shown that he can influence through mental training his autoimmune system. The results of what he has shown us are just mind boggling because through cold water, you can influence your system, let's say, Tox, uh, it, uh, detoxing yourself. It's cold water is anti-inflammatory. It can boost your immune system. It uh, strengthens your vascular system. It is an antidepressant by releasing endorphins. But thing as well, it can give a boost to testosterone and estrogen, and therefore adding an edge to fertility and um, libido, exactly. So Wim's technique shows us how to stay longer through breathing and meditation exercises in cold water. If you do his course, you even sit in an ice bath. I did it, five minutes. And so these benefits for mental and, um, mental and physical health are tremendous and you want to share them. So I asked my friend Jackie to try. And she said, no, I will never do the Wim Hof method. It's just too cold, I can't do it. 
but she was suffering from an inflammatory process in her spine, completely overworked and stressed. I took her hand and said, Jackie, one immersion at a time will change your life forever. And now you will find her sitting in the tidal pool, submerged, relaxed and smiling. And she whispers, we can do more than what we think. And then there's Vanya, who thought swimming through kelp was creepy, was as creepy as visiting her granny's downstairs basement, the dark one. But Vanya said, I can do more than what I think. She got herself snorkel, goggles, and a hoodie. And now she is the sexiest seal snorkeling in the bay. My friends, this is just a few stories, but maybe I could throw a pebble of desire into your water. Maybe your desire can become a tsunami, wanting to be in water, wanting to heal yourself, wanting to expand yourself, wanting to loosen yourself, wanting to open your soul. We have wonderful men in this country like Craig Foster waiting to be an Oscar or winning an Oscar. We have our water right in front of our doorstep. Take your chance, go into this water, submerge one step at a time, one breath at a time. You will never regret it. And always think of it. I can do more than what I think. And we can do more than what we think. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, again. I mean, your mind is just so powerful. You can, everyone can do more than you think. And it's just a matter of just believing and to remember that you're the creator of your life and not the victim. So thank you so much, Gabriella. That was so beautifully said. Now, um, we're just going to have a poll. It's just probably popped up into your screen of you can vote for who you think is the best speaker. But while everyone's voting, can Vanya please give a timekeeper's report? Yes, thank you. Um, well done, everyone. Uh, welcome, Claire. Um, you had um, six minutes and eight seconds. Pierre Van Zell had seven minutes and five seconds. And Gabriel, I love being your seal partner. <laughs> and um, it was seven minutes and 24 seconds. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that, Vanya. Um, now, for those who want their nerves to settle a bit, we have a break, <laughs> a five minute break. So we'll leave you and we'll meet again and reconvene in five minutes. And Claire Alexander, there you are, I can see you now. And thank you so much. This was my first evaluation for speech this evening and it was an absolute pleasure to listen to all the speakers, but I had the honor of evaluating Claire Alexander's speech this evening. And Claire, I'm going to try and not be too persnickety with your evaluation this evening, but I'd love to just share my feedback with you. Um, I think that you had some really, really amazing stories. You linked everything so well. The story, especially about how you said you had 150 out of 200 people who RSVP'd. I loved your laugh and the nervousness that you showed when it dawned on you that you had to do a speech. That just really connected with me and I thought it was brilliantly done. I loved the fact that you mentioned Verity. I think it's so important that when we do our speeches that we mention people that have helped us along the way or we reference to people who have assisted us in terms of the story and the journey. That was really great. I really enjoyed your use of your hands. I think you can show your hands a little bit more and maybe it's the angle of the camera, um, but particularly my second arm. Uh, but particularly when you're standing up in front of guests, I think that that would be easier because people would be able to see your engagement. But maybe just the angle of your camera would be a bit better and then we can see how engaged you are with your hands. Illumination, the fact that you explained the meaning of it and then you went on further a little bit later when you said the meaning of your daughter and your son's names. That was really great. You know, you really got us to understand what you were talking about and you got us to understand how all of that linked to your purpose and how everything intertwined. That was really brilliantly done. 
your nervous laugh when you mentioned up taking up boxing. I really would love to encourage you to own that. You were nervous in the way that you said it, and I'd love for you to own that because the fact that you've done the boxing, the fact that you've done all of these, these activities and these amazing things, that's yours. It belongs to you and nobody else, and you shouldn't be judged for that. You should own that. Um, so that, that's one of my encouragements for you. And your Scottish accent, we could hear that you've got the accent. It's very, very clear, but I understood everything. You were so clear. You were so articulate. You, you were slow in your approach, and we could hear everything that you were saying. You mentioned that you don't want to take on any speaking roles because you lose your words or because you're nervous. I could hear the nervousness a little bit, but you never lost your words. You were so engaged with us as an audience and you did such a brilliant job in articulating your story and what you wanted from us. So very well done to you. I think you're going to be a brilliant speaker one day and you need to own your stories because you feel your stories and you have your stories. And you were so brilliant and you inspired us as your audience and you really took us on your journey. So very well done to you for making this your first speech this evening. You did a brilliant job. Thank you so much, Shreen, for that beautiful evaluation. If anything, you're the master of owning that from everything I've heard in your speeches. So clear, if anything, you had the best evaluator tonight to kind of link it up. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Now, Anamika, it's your turn to give your evaluation, please. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Is it a good idea to start a speech with a question, Claire? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, what a powerful way to start. Um, it was just really great when you ask a question and you pause and you allow people to come into your space, into your energy and come into your world of what you're going to be speaking about. So a fantastic start to a speech. And you did some of the basics excellently. And what I'm referring to here is the photo behind you. You know, I could literally picture I can't remember her name. I could picture her sitting in Eastbourne by herself for six months in her florally t-shirt, waiting for her people to come. And finally her people came. You also did very well with your tone, your changes of tone and your use of the camera. And there was one particular moment when you used all both of those together, oh, your pace, your tone and the camera when you were talking about the scoring, where you, where you came forward, you changed your tone, you became a little bit more interesting. You said, I didn't, I knew we could get to 10 out of 10, but I only told them five out of 10. I thought that was a really excellent way to pull us in and be part of your little secret and come into the, into the truth with you. In terms of what I noticed, what, something I found a little bit distracting, which I actually see often in work, is there's a slight reflection in your glasses that comes from your screen. And I'm not sure how you take that away, but I know that's always something that our um, webinar provider always tells us, just be careful of, those, um, of that reflection because it's a little bit distracting from what you're trying to say. I really got a good sense of your story. We don't have to know exactly where, where we're going to end up, but we have to have the sense of that goal inside of us and how mentoring plays a part. You shared beautifully about your own story, moving from England to South Africa, which is Paul to Bloberg, and it was a complicated time. But I got the sense that you really held close this desire and learnings that you gained in England to bring it back here and share that mentoring experience. And we are, um, I think we, I can say on behalf of all of us, we're very grateful for you sharing that and bringing all that learning and energy to Toasted today. Because I think we are on a great uh, trajectory here and it's because of members like you who are mentoring and showing us how it can be done that we are on this journey. So thank you and well done on a great speech. 
Thank you, Anamika, and thank you for your energy. I mean, every time you come close and say things to the camera, it's very inviting. So very well done on your evaluation. And again, well done, Claire. Now, on to you, Kevin, um, and your sustainability background. Off you go, given your evaluation. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, and uh, most importantly, Gabriella. Gabriella, I just absolutely love your humor. I love the way you stand in front um, you know, it's just the way that you you speak to us, even though you're so far removed from us, that your eyes, your smile, um, absolutely engaging. The minute you started talking, I really was drawn right in and I really, really got what you were trying to say. It's, it's something um, I don't get down every single day, but certainly at least um, once a week, try and get down and go diving with the kids. And the, the way you tell the story of the development going, um, I can't remember the term you used, going down into Granny's basement and, how, and, and being scared of the kelp. And I saw exactly that same thing in my daughters and going out into the kelp and actually showing them how this, this beautiful kelp forest is actually a zone of safety for, um, for this incredible sea life. So um, I was there straight away and I, I really got what you were trying to, to, to tell. Um, one thing where I felt or, or struggled a little bit, and I think maybe it was just a two, probably two things, seeing you coming, coming off a speaking contest and also having a little bit of a bad connection. Tonight you felt a little bit flat. <laughs> it's incredibly, <laughs> incredibly critical, but you felt a little bit flat. I didn't quite get that vocal variety that you, um, that you normally um, are so uh, well accomplished with. Um, Another thing that I felt maybe is that probably once again, coming off a, a speaking contest and straight into to a new project, um, I think maybe you had a lot of different ideas. And I think that that could probably have been split down into two different speeches. Um, I, th I thought there was a lot in there that could have been further unpacked and you touched on things a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think maybe taking away some of that content um, would have had a much more powerful speech, maybe focusing one on um, uh, Wim Hof, the, the breathing technique and, and what you can accomplish with that. And then one just on the, the sea portion and the incredible health benefits of the, of the sea. And um, uh, yeah, just, I mean, just the, the stress relief and, and all of those, those, those benefits. Um, but yeah, I mean, apart from that, um, I think the one other thing that I did notice, also incredibly critical this time, um, you you engage very well. The um, you know we can do we can do so much more and leaning in and talking like that. The way you talk with your eyes and your body. Today you felt a little bit fidgety and you were jumping around from one foot to another. So I found that at times were, was a little bit distracting, but. Um, yeah, I mean, just overall, what a fantastic speech, uh, excellent context, context. and um, as I said, you know, you started speaking and I was immediately, I was there with you as you were pulling down on that, that cup. So keep up the fantastic work, well done. Thank you so much for the evaluation. I mean, it's hard to even pinpoint anything with Gabriella. So, I mean, if anything, critique helps us grow and challenge us more. So thank you for pulling that out. I mean, I don't think it was taken in any bad way in any sense. But moving on to now our... <laughs> Banya. <laughs> See, this is when the glasses come handy. I wasn't trying to use them. Banya, can you give a please an evaluation of the time while we please in, um, give a poll for who the best evaluator was? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Serene had three minutes and eight seconds. Anamika had three minutes and one second. And Kevin had three minutes and ten seconds. Thank you, Madam Facebook. And thank you. All righty, now comes to the time where Nick kind of, I wouldn't say throws me under the bus, but challenges, challenges me every time we do Toastmasters. It's now time for table topics. Michelle, please, can you give a description of what um, table topics is in Propto speeches? Just a voice from the dark and the last three people, please vote. I think our poll stopped and started again. So if you're still able to vote, please do. Thank you.
I don't know if I I'm, can't hear Michelle. I don't know if anyone else can. No, Still I'm mute. <laughs> um, no, not just yet. <clears throat> Normally it's me that gets the technical problems. So I'm so glad that it's someone else. But if anything, I think it would be best if you log out and come back in. Normally that helps. And while she's doing that, the last two people to vote, please cast your votes. This feels like an American election. You could be the vote that counts. <laughs> The moment we've all been waiting for and if anything if you do want to have a tip on how to get your glare out of your glasses i heard the beauty there's a beauty button on to, on the zoom where you can click and i don't know if, how beautiful it makes you but it definitely blurs things up a bit so maybe that will help with the reflection on the glasses you can give it a go but clear if anything i keep wanting those people behind you to move i'm always fascinated with your backgrounds <laughs> Well, while we're waiting for Michelle, I just want to kind of give you a lasting reminder that perhaps when waking up tomorrow, if you want to set the tone to become a leader of your own self and your own life, because that's the only way you can lead a team properly, is firstly from within to tap in with yourself, to not snooze that alarm, to actually wake up. And that's the first thing, that's the first choice you make in your life and your day. And then that sets the tone for the day ironic coming from me because I <laughs> tend to snooze quite a lot but the days that I don't I know that I'm gonna have a productive day so give it a go and if anything the audiobook is pretty good with this I know Nicola listens to the audiobook but I finished this book in a day so it's really really great um, I couldn't recommend it even more is Michelle still is she so oh you're here I can't I can see you but I can't hear you <laughs> I feel like you need to just learn some sign language quickly. We can do a YouTube video and we can go through that together and you can maybe tell us what you need to. <laughs> no, still nothing. I was having the same problem the other day. Um, I'm not sure if anyone wants to step in and explain her role perhaps. And then Michelle can kind of send in the topics if possible, unless you're Mike. I'm happy to explain it. All righty, please do. Thank you, Michelle. Sorry about that. Thank you, Claire. So Table Topics is all about learning to speak without preparation. And how many of you have been in those situations where a boss or a client puts you on the spot and says, what is your opinion about whatever? And there you don't have any time to prepare. You have to formulate your thoughts and share your opinion. That's exactly why Table Topics was sort of created. It's the opportunity to learn to speak without preparation. And the, the basic concept is having an, a, an opening, a body, and a conclusion. So tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. That's table topics. Can anyone hear me now? Yes, good timing. I feel like that was oh. nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, <laughs> Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters. And Claire Fonseil, you are a hero. Thank you so much. Great. So it's a wonderful topic. And I am very pleased that I have some wonderfully prepared quotes. And do not be, uh, what is our word? Goodness, wait for me one second. I need to get my word. Per persnickety about the choice of your uh of your, your numbers this evening, because there's lots to choose from. So I am very keen to continue this fantastic inspirational evening because we've been so inspired by many, many people this evening. So give me a number, come on toasties. I've got one to 15. So you've got a big range of numbers to choose from tonight. And it's all about around high performance leadership and leadership in general. Am I going to have to choose somebody? Nicola. Oh. <laughs> okay, wait, I've got a number. Hold on. 
So I think I've got Paul. Thanks, Paul. You want number one. Thank you, sir. I will put this in the chat. Number one, don't lower your expectations to meet your performance. Raise your level of performance to meet your expectations. Ralph Marston. Don't lower your expectations to meet your performance. Raise your level of performance to meet your expectations. I will put that into the chat. Well, that's a beautiful quote. I would add another quote. Shoot for the stars and you'll beat the moon. I be believe we have one life. We have to go for the best. And I will tell you a dream that in fact I want to use for our next speech. With the whole COVID, we all scared. Well, I was scared to go back to South Africa. Luckily I go back next week. And I was feeling like dying and I was looking in my dead bed and I looked my siblings around, my wife. She says, he's a good, good husband. I say, my kids, well, he was not too bad as a father. And then I saw ghosts coming up. It was really a scaring nightmare. Ghosts coming up and popping up and crying because they were crying due to the fact that I was dying and there were certain expectations, certain things that I didn't fulfill in life. So those ghosts was crying with new ventures that I was busy with. And now they were dying together with the venture. And I got a lot of expectations in my life. I really, I want the best out. I want to help people. I want to improve people. I want to leave a legacy, a big legacy with 30, 40,000 people that I'm helping in what I'm doing. And it was really a nightmare. I had the nightmare already a few times with the COVID. And that's really scaring, seeing yourself on your own deadbed and where your wife say, he was a good husband, but good is not enough in life. If you are not exceptional, good is worth nothing. Due to the fact that I remember the story about a fellow who said, well, I was a good husband and my wife divorced me. But if you are good, it's not good enough today. In a competitive world, we have to be exceptional. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Very well Thank done. You. Thank, Thank you, away, you so much, Paul. I love it when it comes to leadership. Paul just speaks so naturally about leadership. It's amazing. Thank you, Shireen. Thank you for nominating yourself. You've chosen number 10. If you believe in what you are doing, then let nothing hold you up in your work. Much of the best work of the world has been done against seeming impossibilities. The thing is to get the work done. Dale Carnegie. If you believe in what you are doing, then let nothing hold you up in your work. Much of the best work of the world has been done against seemingly impossibilities. The thing is to get the work done. I will post it in the chat. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm going to wait for you to post it in the chat, but I'm going to counter that phrase that you've sent me right now with, if you love what you do, then you will never work a day in your life. So the, the quote that you've just given me now, if you believe in what you are doing, then let nothing hold you up in your work. Much of the best work of the world has been done against seemingly impossibilities. The thing is to get the work done. Procrastination is one of my weaknesses. And sometimes procrastination can be the thing that holds me back from doing the work that needs to be done. But for me, my passion lies in developing people, in inspiring people, in introductions to people who I can collaborate with, who I can partner with, and who I can seek the best in myself, and in order for me to be able to influence the best in other people. And for me to be able to do that every single day gives me the power, gives me the inspiration, gives me the determination to be able to believe in what I am doing and let nothing hold me back in the work that I'm doing. To be around people and to inspire them and to develop them and to learn from them, like a group that we're in today, 
listening to the evaluations and the speeches, listening to the speeches that Gabrielle's done today and the two players have done for us today. I've learned so much. I've been inspired by their speeches this evening. And that for me makes me love what I'm doing right here. And by being part of Toastmasters, I'm doing what I love and I'm inspiring myself to be better at speaking publicly and it's my aspiration of being a motivational speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shireen. Lovely. Excellent. We've got Nicola up. Thank you, Nicola. You're on mute. Yeah. Can I pick number seven, please? Thank you. Be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. Steve Jobs. Be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellent is expected. I will post that for you. So the first thing that that quote brings to mind is um, creativity. I studied fine art for four years and then I studied marketing and now I'm working as a graphic designer at Two Fillers Media. And in my creativity, I've always been something of a perfectionist, which most of the time goes down quite well, but at the same time, it can lead to very long working hours and very long nights. When I was in school and doing art there, I'd always end up pulling all nighters before our pieces were due, just to make sure that it was as perfect as it could possibly be. And generally that would pay off. In varsity, when I studied fine art, the same thing followed suit. And before our exams were due, not much sleep would be had. Um, but it is a passion of mine and I'm so glad that now I get to work doing in creativity, continuing to produce things that I hope are good enough. I will never really submit something that I don't think is up to standard, even if it does mean a late night and some or lots of coffee. So thank you. Thank you. Lovely, Nicola. You, de you definitely are an old soul. And it seems as if you just keep pushing and pushing yourself. It's amazing. You really keep doing what you're doing and it, you'll really see the, the, the benefits of that. Good job. Okay. Who else do I have, ladies and gentlemen? Any of our newbies want to give it a try? Push yourself out of your comfort zone. We are here to support you. Anyone? I don't mind John, going. do you want to? Okay, Anna Mika, I love it. I love it. Go for it. If you don't give mind me hearing my voice again. No, you give me a number. Uh, number four. Great. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. Thomas Jefferson. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. I will post that for you. Great. Thank you, Michelle. I love this quote. And I'm going to start with a question because Claire showed us how. But have you ever been in a meeting where someone has arrived with just a great energy? It doesn't even really matter how they present. It's you're just attracted to their passion on the subject so deeply that they just draw you in and you can't keep your eyes off this person. On the other hand, have you been to a meeting where someone has come in, has been excellent technically, but boring, unenthusiastic, low energy, low posture, and it's you, with all your might, you know this person has been paid a lot to stand up there, but I cannot concentrate for more than 30 seconds at a time because it's so incredibly 
dull. Not that the subject is dull, the way the person delivering it is so dull. And what this has taught me 15 years in corporate is the fact that you don't have to say the most brilliant thing out there. You just have to say something quite simple with a lot of passion and all your heart and all your soul and people will love it. People will drink it up and match your energy back in the room. And just like, just the other way, if you go in there and you don't feel strongly about it, people will pick it up. They won't buy your product. They won't believe in you. So I suppose it's just one of those questions that you want to ask yourself, you know, start tuning in and finding out where you are. When people are presenting, do you feel great when you're listening to them? Or do you just want to retract and move away? And I think you'll get a good sense of the energy that person has, the passion that person has, the mental attitude that person has, um, and take it into your life going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Anamika. That's wonderful. Wow, what a bunch of inspired people we have have here and it's really great that we had an opportunity to listen to these impromptu speeches unfortunately we only have time for this this evening and i really am so inspired by everybody tonight i'm so glad i chose to be here i'm going to hand over to michaela our toastmaster for this evening thank you everyone for your participation Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant topics. I mean, this is my favorite part of Toastmasters every evening, even though the nerves bustle in me, even though I'm not going to speak just as yet, but really well done. Um, for everyone, please, can you um, vote for the best table topic? The pop-up should come up on your screen. Let us know if it didn't. But moving on swiftly, we're going to go to Vanya, who's going to give us a timekeeper's report. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Um, Paul had one minute and 59 seconds. Shireen had one minute and 35 seconds. Nicola had one minute and 16 seconds. And Onomika had one minute and 59 seconds. Thank you so much for that. And after Paul's table topic, there's no such thing as mediocre. I'm interested to hear all the ums and ahs, so please take it away. <laughs> well, Michaela, I got good news for you. You want to hear it? You got 10 ums tonight, but I think you did very great because I remember I was scoring 12 and 13 just on one speech. And you hold the whole night only with 10. So well done. You're really improving. Thank you. Appreciate that. Vanya, uh, we got three ums. Shireen, we got three ums and one but. Claire Alexander, uh, two times a repetition. Then three ums and one ah. Anamika, I got four ums and one but. Claire Van Zell, one repetition. No, one um. Then two so. And then two butts. Then I got Kevin. I think you might improve because you got 22 ums tonight and two butts. Gabriella, I only find three ums and one butt. That's so far for my uh, recommendation. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Paul, for your persnickety. <laughs> now moving on to Nicola, the ultimate hard worker and the reason I love being on her team. Please take it away for the grammarian report. So Mickey, you snuck in there at the end with using the word of the day and Shireen and Michelle, you also used the word of the day. Then just on everyone's speeches, Claire, I really liked, or Claire number one, I really liked when you said, if you want to be the light in this world, unleash the internal warrior to make this happen. I hope I got phrased it correctly, but I really liked how you said that. Then Claire, number two, I liked how you rabbit out of that hat. And then when you spoke about leadership, I thought it was nice how you said, inspire others into action. Um, Gabrielle, I thought your speech was full of I don't know what the correct way of saying this is, but full of nice sayings and phrases. I said, 
I liked how you said, what do ice and I have in common? Water, that was quite a nice way to draw us into your speech. And then I liked the custodian and not a consumer of the ocean, being living in Sea Point and swimming in the sea fairly often. It's so nice to hear that other people feel that way about the sea. And then I also liked how you said, my love for the ocean runs deep, but so does my fear. It was just a very visceral way of describing how you felt about the sea. And then, Anamika, I liked how you used Claire's method of speaking back to her and started, is it a good idea to start a speech with a question, Claire? Um, I think that's everything from my side, but well done, everyone. The speeches were very good tonight and very interesting to listen to. Thank you, Nicola. Well listened and well said. I mean, if anything, yeah, I would please bring the persnickety to the office a bit more with some new words that I don't know yet. Um, but closing thoughts before I hand the mic back to Verity. If anything, I was beyond nervous to be postmaster tonight, but if anything, it's just fantastic to know I'm surrounded by true leaders inside and out and who are really pushing me and Nicola and my team and soon you'll meet Michelle who was our newbie. So thank you everyone for being the leaders within yourselves and leading the team left, right and centre. I'm going to just leave with a parting quote. The more you practice, the better you get, the more freedom you have to create. Thank you. Wow, Michaela, let's give some love to Michaela. Let's get some hearts up there and some like celebratory icons. Come on, press your emojis. I think she needs a lot of love. That was exceptional. And, and Michaela, I really, I really want to tell you that was exceptional because you know you've been sending us links to your interviewing and you've sent me stuff beforehand, and I've been giving a little bit of feedback on how to make it more real and authentic and natural. And if you can run your show like this, it's just the next level. It was so beautiful. It didn't feel like you were trying to stick to a script. You were trusting what you needed to say. And I hope that you keep trusting that because you were an exemplary Toastmaster and uh, just well done. I love it when members step up and, and take the challenge. So. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, really beautifully done. And just, yeah, congrats to everyone on an amazing, meeting as always this really is a, a group effort and, and Claire your speech I think really spoke to us as a club having you know not just a year ago only having six members and seeing what is capable when people have a vision and a commitment and they pull together as a team and now we have this incredible community that continues to grow and continues to add value to each and every one of us which is extraordinary and so exciting to see so Lovely. I know our other Claire doing her icebreaker had to rush off her seeing their parents-in-law for the first time since lockdown. So understandably, she made her apologies. And uh, we've been losing people with connectivity, but we've still somehow all managed to stay connected throughout this very special evening. I would love to um, just hear some feedback. We didn't actually welcome Michelle de Clerc. I think you came in a little bit later and visiting us for the first time from two fellas. Uh, we'd love to meet you and hear how you found your first Toastmasters meeting. If I can put you on the spot. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, but yeah, I've just started with two fellas as the intern. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed this evening and I think I'm excited for it to push me and challenge me. Um, I definitely could use with some um, getting put out, like, out of my comfort zone. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited. Thank you. Yay. So, yeah. so to give you some context, Michelle is joining our club. <laughs> Ah, oh, there you are. Yay, welcome. Yeah. I can't see anyone else for some reason, but here I am. Okay, well, we can see you now and hopefully the next meeting we can get your Zoom sorted out. But so excited to yeah. have you join us and uh, go on your speaking and leadership journey. Beautiful. Yeah. I'd also Thank love you. to hear from Eugene, a new member who we haven't met before who's joined already. How did you find your first meeting? Do you feel like you've made the right choice, Eugene? Absolutely not. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm going to speak as little as possible because I lost my voice or uh, quite a bit of it. Um, but yeah, to be, that's one M for me. To be completely honest, I'm not a big fan of meetings. 
and I have to say this was a valuable meeting. Awesome, to the point and fantastic. Love oh, it. Wonderful. I hope your voice comes back soon and we look forward Thank to you, you finding it with us in our to the point Thank meetings. You. Awesome. Thanks, Great Eugene. Job, everybody. Yay. Beautiful. Um, okay, I think that's from everyone. John, maybe just to, we didn't have you take part in any of the roles. So how have you hung in being with us from your car in a snowstorm? Please let us know. I've enjoyed it very much and found it inspirational. Thank you all. Oh, thank you, John. And we look forward to hearing you speak again soon. Um, fabulous. So from my side, I, I can't even think. My brain is still definitely filled with smoke from this morning. I don't think there's anything pressing that we have in terms of club news. Our next meeting is sometime in May. Again, it's like, poof, there's nothing here. It's third uh, of May. <laughs> third of May, Verity. You see, Michelle, what would I do without you? Third of May, uh, spread the word. Let's have double the participants at the next meeting. Hopefully, uh, we will know. Well, we'll know on Saturday if I've made it through to the finals of the Southern African Champs. So please think of me on Saturday. I don't know what time I'm competing in the semi-finals, but uh, hopefully, I will take toasted to the Southern African finals. All going well. Thanks, Shireen. Um, and we see, I, I can do all my ums after the um counting has finished, and no one can be persnickety about it. <laughs> so now it's time for awards and. It, in a beautiful turn of events, we've had two ties tonight. We've had a tie for table topics and a tie for evaluations. So you know that we have got a great club when everyone does their job so well that we get lots of votes. So let's have a look and you're welcome to unmute and give some, don't look at my screen because now you're seeing it going ahead and I can't find the slideshow. It's all going wrong. So <laughs> let's unmute and just go. <laughs> And for best table <laughs> topics of the night, Nicola Moody. And sharing the podium Woo! with Nicola is Annemika van der Volk. And then for our best evaluators of the evening, we've got Shireen O'Neill with her first ever evaluation. How awesome Woo! is that? Well done, Shireen. <laughs> and back on the podium, Annemika van der Volk. Woo! But there was only one best speaker of the night. So please, ladies and gentlemen, will you give it up for our speaker of the evening who speaks straight to our hearts every time she opens her mouth and inspires us to push our limits. Gabriella! Okay, we will share those certificates with you. But from my side, thank you for another wonderful meeting. Thank you for being a club that speaks from its heart and to ours. And look forward to seeing you on the 3rd of May. Please stay safe and uh, we will be in touch and keep in touch on WhatsApp and uh, make magic. Thank you. And thank you again to Michaela for holding the space so beautifully. Mwah. <laughs> thank night, you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Robert. Bye. I need it. <laughs> <laughs>